Hello and welcome back to episode number 5 of my God of War tutorial series. Today we will implement it so that our radar will be highlighted when our player is close to a hidden object and later fix some bugs that came up during the course of the series. If we have a look at God of War when Kratos comes close to a hidden chest, the color of the radar changes to a bright orange to indicate that there is something hidden and then goes back to white when the player is no longer nearby. So let's create that first. We'll go to our widgets folder and to the W underscore radar. We have a look here. We made our radar background a variable, that's good, we've got access to it. And let's have a look at the color and opacity. So the alpha here is currently set to 0.7 and it's white. If we double click that, you get your color picker and you can grab your old value or the new one, doesn't matter, and drag and drop that onto that space here. So you can reference it later without having to remind the exact color or a code. And let's look for something like a bright orange maybe somewhere here and bump up the alpha to one a bit more orange that looks fine then we will also grab that color and drop it onto our palette up here so this is the color we want to switch to when close to an object and the white is the default color so we will select that here again and hit ok let's make a function that will change the color so we'll head over to the graph just add one function called highlight Radar with one input of type boolean called highlight question mark. So we will use this function for both setting the color to orange and resetting it to white, which is controlled with that simple boolean. The only thing we have to do in here is grab our radar variable and set color and opacity. Then off of the in color and opacity, we want to select it. And the pick A will be our highlight input. All right, so now we can select two colors. A would be if the radar is highlighted and B if it's not. So select A and then you can simply pick the color from your palette that we just defined. So the orange and for B the white with an alpha of 0.7. Right, let's compile and save that. That's it for our radar widget. You can close it. And if we go into our radar system folder into classes, we want to have one parent class for all of the secret objects that we can later place in our world. So let's create a blueprint class of type actor and we'll call that bp underscore master underscore secret or hidden object, whatever feels more intuitive for you. Then we will open that up and just have something to look at. We will give it a static mesh component. Then we can select a default here. We don't have much to choose from because we didn't include starter content. So let's just take the one meter cube. Basically what we want to have is a radius around that static mesh. And if our player enters that radius, we can highlight the radar and then reset that once player left the radius. Easiest way to do this is using a sphere collision. So let's look for sphere collision. And let's call that the highlight range we bump up the radius you can see that appearing just for testing purposes we will uncheck hidden in game so you will actually be able to see that radius when we start playing later let's go over to our event graph and we need one variable i will just call it the highlight radius so that will be used to control the size of that spear collision let's make it a float editable and exposed on spawn so we are able to change it per secret object that we later drag out into our world and let's compile save i'll give that a default value of let's say 120 unreal units and so that our sphere updates in real time here and also in the editor we will have to go to our construction script then grab the highlight range so that sphere collision and set radius we'll be asking you for an in radius and that will simply be our variable also check update overlaps, that's fine. If you compile and save now and head back to the viewport, you can see that we can dynamically control that size here. So if we bump up the highlight radius, our sphere increases or decreases in size. Now we want to define what happens when an object with a radar component is in range of a secret. So we will minimize our master secret for now and go to our radar component close our functions and i will add one variable here which we will call secrets in range because of course it could be that there are two secrets that overlap and that our player is in range of two different secrets at the same time so that has to be an array here and the type for that will just be a master secret object reference 
Also, this is an internal variable, so we might make it private. And then let's look for some empty space and we want two custom events. Let's start off with the first one, which we will call on enter secret range. This needs one input. Of course, that has to be a reference to the secret that we're now close to. Type for that, master secret reference again, and let's just call it secret. First thing we have to do here is to check that our secrets in range doesn't already contain this element. So grab your array, look for contains, and then hook up the input. Off of the true or false here, we will simply add a branch and hook that up to the event. Then we only proceed if it's false. If it's false, we can copy over array, and then we will add an element. So if it's not contained already, we can add the input to our secrets in range. And then we would want to highlight our raider. However, we don't want to call that function for the second, third and fourth element that were added and so on, but only for the first one. So we will get the length of that array, which is the amount of items in it, and check whether that now equals one after we've added one element. So basically saying, was this the first secret that was added to this array? Then we will add a branch off of the return value here. And if it's true, we grab our Raider widget reference and call highlight Raider. Make sure that you check the highlight here and compile and save afterwards. Then we will add another custom event, which is basically the opposite here. So on leaf secret range. And this here also needs the same input. So a master secret called secret. Copy our contains and branch because you can only remove an element if it's contained. So hook up the input to contains, hook up the execution, and this time we only proceed on the true path. So we check whether that secret that we're leaving is currently in our secrets in range array. And if so, we want to remove it. So just call remove item, not index, and hook up the input. Then we have to check whether our secrets in range is empty after we've removed an element. So let's grab the length again. And we want to check whether that double equals zero. Let's add another branch and hook up the equals zero. Only if it's true, we grab our Raider widget and call highlight Raider again. But this time we will leave the input false. Part save. We've got our two events in place. Only need to call them and that we can only do from within our master secret because it's got the collision sphere. So let's go back there. Select your highlight range. If you scroll down, you see a list of events that you can implement. So we will start with on component begin overlap and select it again. We will also implement on end overlap. Let's start with begin overlap. We want to make this event as generic as possible. So we want to avoid checking whether the other actor here is a third person character so that later we can simply migrate the system to first person or top down or whatever you want and don't have to change the events here. So we don't really worry about the other actor. We only want to check whether that actor has a Raider component. And to do that off of your other actor, get component by class. Class here will be your BPC Raider component. And then off of the return value, we will use a node called is valid. So this just means does the actor that is now in range of our secret contain a Raider component. And if so, off of the Raider component, which is your return value here, we can call on enter secret range. Hook that up to is valid. And the secret it's asking for is simply a reference to self. Let's copy that nodes and paste them for on component end overlap. Again, hook up the execution and the other actor to get component by class. Instead of calling enter secret range, we will call on leaf secret range and hook up self to the secret. If you compile and save, you already got all of the logic in place for secrets. Let's check whether that works. So if we minimize our classes and let's go to a classes folder, just drag a master secret into the world. Maybe let's say one goes here and with it selected, you get your highlight radius. You can increase that and see it updating on runtime because we implemented that on construction script. Then I'll just add a second one and bump up the radius so that they kind of overlap. And then I'll hit play. All right, you can see our two secrets and you also see their radius because we unchecked hidden in game. If we enter the first one, See our radar is now orange and also the alpha has increased. If we leave the radius again, it goes back to white. 
and if we move from that radius into the other one you see it stays orange until we leave the second radius and goes back to white. Alright, hopefully you've seen that highlighting the radar is pretty easy to implement. Now that that is out of the way, we can turn to some bugs of our system that can be fixed fairly quickly. Let me show you the first bug real quickly in a new editor window. So you see our radar and we implemented the C key which will fade it out. If I hit that, you only see that the background texture fades out. However, our markers and landmarks will just stay visible until the very end and will then be hidden without any animation. So let's fix that issue. We have a look at our radar widget. We added one animation that was called blend out. Let's go in there and to the timeline. We have a look at that. The only thing here that is animated is the color and opacity of the radar. The individual markers and landmarks are elements of the overlay, so this one, and therefore they're currently not animated. To change that, instead of animating the radar, we will animate the opacity of the whole widget, so the W underscore radar. If you have a look at that, you've got the render opacity, which can also be animated. Let's add a keyframe for that with 1 at 0 seconds, then we'll go to 0.5 seconds, enter 0, and before hitting enter, hit the little keyframe button. So right now, the opacity of the whole widget and of the radar background are animated simultaneously. Don't need that, so we can simply remove the radar track here, just hitting delete, and then you'll see that now only the opacity of the whole widget is affected. Let's compile, save, close that widget and open it up again because I told you that working with animations sometimes messes up the default values, which it did here. So select your radar and scroll down to the render opacity and make one the default. All right, compile and save. That should already be the fix. So let me show you. Here's our radar. If I hit C now, everything fades out smoothly and fades in again. And now it also works with highlighting. So currently it's orange. And if we blend it out, that also looks fine. If you did that with the animation from before, your radar would change the color to white in there. Okay, so that was the first bug that we fixed. Another issue of our system right now is that if we hide our radar and move around to a different location, then stand still and show it again. Nothing here has updated. It will only do that once we turn around. All right, so let's fix that. We will need to go into our components and to the BPC Raider component, then to the event graph, and let's add another custom event called on become visible. So this here will be called before fading in the Raider again, and we basically just want to call all of the functions that handle updating the widgets. So let's call update direction widgets, then we will call update mark distances and also update marker positions and finally update landmark positions. So these are the four functions that we will call here and in our set visibility event let's start with when animating is false then let's add a branch and connect visible question mark. So if visible is true before we set the visibility here we want to call on become visible and then go into the set visibility node and if it's false we will directly go into set visibility. That means fixing the issue when we're not using our animations. If we are however, here on the true path and on the second branch, also on the true path, before we set the visibility here we will simply call on become visible. Compile and save now and hit play. I'll fade out the radar, go somewhere else and if I hit C again, that updated properly. If we have a look at that event, these four function calls are exactly the ones that we are calling here before adding the main widget to the viewport. So just to get rid of some of these nodes, we will remove them and on the completed call on become visible before going into the add to viewport node. So that is the end of this episode. We implemented highlighting the radar when close to secret objects and fixed two bugs of our system. Next up we'll be adding a basic enemy AI and displaying enemies on our radar when our player is in a certain range to them. So see you then.